Cambodia, UK, US, Canada, everywhere these kind of offenses keep taking place and India which is supposed to be a land of saints and very uh, uh, full of virtues with ancient scriptures where we keep hearing uh, that uh, uh, that uh, you must have heard Jatra Naryati Pujante Ramante Tatta Devata in a country where women are worshipped as Kali, as Goddess Saraswati, as Goddess Lakshmi are being compelled to suffer the atrocity of the worst form, not merely their, you know, uh, their, their uh, killing of soul, but making them suffer the worst kind of the, the, the crime in the form of acid throwing to mutilate their body and do not kill them but make them suffer to the entire life where they can neither live nor can die. This is, you know, it's a very shocking thing that this is existing. And you, as a think tank of the future society, I'm quite sure you will have to deliberate and create a voice which will definitely be crystallized in the form of a public opinion where you can not only create awakening among the society that this was worst form of crime is to be checked, but also as to how legislations should come into existence where, uh, where these crimes can be checked. In fact, uh, I, uh, I, 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 uh, I am reminded of a matter very recently in the Supreme Court when a matter came up before me that a, 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 a woman, a lady, had filed a transfer petition because transfer petition, it's a matrimonial suit. The husband has filed a divorce suit and a transfer petition was filed by the woman for transferring the matter from one, court, from one state to another state. And I was shocked to see that it was not one of those because generally these, you know, these uh, uh, acid throwing generally is perceived to be a crime where a boy feeling frustrated at the rejection of a girl who doesn't respond to his advances, doesn't give in to what he expects her by, uh, by, uh, uh, by submitting to his, uh, to his urges. It was a case where the husband was uh, indulging in domestic violence and torturing the woman and the woman was suffering in spite of everything and she was trying to make up uh, in that situation and finally she had to suffer acid attack at the instance of her husband at which point she was forced to walk out of the matrimonial house and went to her father's house. And it was in this circumstance that she wanted the matter to be transferred from where, from uh, somewhere near Calcutta to Chhattisgarh or uh, to some other state. It was a shocking thing that the the uh, 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 the the man could go to this extent of torturing the woman by not only uh, making her listen but making her submit to the extent that he can destroy his, her entire existence. Now, I must really, uh, uh, really compliment to the uh, Muta Society who has, who have uh, the members, the staff uh, and all the, uh, the academicians who thought that this was a subject important enough for the upcoming, for the younger generation to deliberate over this because you have to realize and you have to think about the ways and means how it should be checked. Legislation no doubt is just one part of this. 
legislation as the you must be uh, aware that the law commission uh, uh, gave its uh, 226th report on the subject and uh, uh, laid down that what are the checks and balances uh, uh, which can be introduced and suggested a bill and an act to check these this heinous offense in the form of a legislation it also suggested that a board should be constituted to decide the compensation of the injuries that that the uh, uh, that uh, victims of such offense can get compensation uh, expeditiously because as you know if we you go by the uh, by the uh, normal uh, way of claiming compensation it gets uh, it gets uh, delayed under the wheels of slow process of the justice so the 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 uh, law commission fortunately recommended that because uh, uh, you must be aware that under the ipc this this is there's, there's no separate offense dealing with the acid attack and how does it get tackled that is it is it gets addressed by the by the section of grievous injury of 326 and where the courts had a, have a lot of discretion in uh, in uh, uh, dealing with the offense and punishing the the uh, uh, the accused and even if the trial court punishes the the the, the case that was given for your uh, moot court competition i notice that the trial court perhaps had dealt with with a much more pragmatism and uh, realism than what the courts at the higher level dealt with it but i must tell you that when i look to the uh, to the contents of the case uh, case law which had been given to you for uh, the moot court competition it did compel me to think that this case i am quite sure anyone who would be arguing against the against this case would be really will have a hard nut to crack and will really have to uh, to compel his mind as to what argument can be can he advance against the case rather in support of the uh, of the accused but that is you know that that is where your legal argument and your your urge to become a, a a good lawyer gets an advantage and you have to rake your brains as to how to uh, to give support to an otherwise difficult case if if the case is easy of course you will have uh, arguments you will also have the support of the judge uh, even in the moot court judge and also in the real life judge that where you can you can advance convincing arguments in support of the subject but when it comes to tackling the 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 negative side of the case and make it positive in order to uh, to uh, gain justice for uh, for the accused then of course it is a difficult task but i am quite sure the lawyer who argued the matter uh, in the support of the uh, case of the accused in a given case which was your case for the vote court competition i am quite sure the lawyer must really be congratulated as i keep uh, saying uh, once in a while in my court when a when a lawyer appears for a bad case then i have to say that you know i cannot grant you the relief but i must congratulate you that you have been able to offer a very good argument in support of your case so i can congratulate for your legal acumen i can also congratulate you for getting a notice in this matter but unfortunately you will not get the relief <laughs> so that is the that is the you know uh, the if you see the positive side of it then anyone who has been appearing for the accused in this moot court competition and have yet succeeded in getting a prize or getting a rank in this moot court competition he or she needs to be doubly congratulated and i can 
I can see a good future for you for handling the matters on the litigation side. So these are, you know, uh, the uh, uh, the aspects, of course, that deals with the law, uh, the lawyerism, the legal acumen of the of the students who are into it. But I think a, a lawyer is not a good lawyer merely if he wins a case for himself. He has to apply his mind that what dimension can be given to the case where 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 the uh, uh, jurisprudence develops from a particular case law and in a matter dealing with uh, with, the, with the with the acid attacks i think you have to deliberate and examine what are the psychological uh, aspects of such a such a mental state who indulges in and you have to add inside you have to add give a horizon to 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 explore as to how it should be dealt with that the 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 young uh, 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 young members of especially the the uh, uh, boy section do not indulge in this kind of a crime the moot court facts uh, which you were given to to uh, to address and argue itself reflected that the boy uh, i think he was ramesh ramesh was himself not inclined that this kind of an attack should be made on the girl with whom he was emotionally involved and yet he was uh, he was uh, forced into that crime the abetment at the instance of the so called uh, mahesh who had affection for him that he should not suffer from this kind of a rejection so on the one hand the while the young community uh, the young crowd the suggestion uh, from uh, many uh, uh, legal uh, th thinkers they have come out with a solution in one of the suggestions which i read was that there should be a compulsory subject for for the human rights especially for human rights to the women i think these uh, these uh, 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 jean law faculty and able academicians you can think and come out as a public opinion whether it would be advisable that it should be made compulsory as a subject right from the school stage stages i for one because i have been basically taught by 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 the by my teachers who are part of the christian missionaries and we had in school days we had a class we had a we had a subject known as moral science classes and how much did we detest those moral science classes we thought it's just a waste of time and nobody really took it seriously but now over the years after gaining this maturity i for one i feel that those who have been studied those who have been taught in moral science were simple things how to you help your mother how to be respectful to your teacher really has a very soothing influence which generates the personality of an individual to be tolerant to be respectful to an extent where you need to to submit and also to assert at times i may be misunderstood so i will not say more sometimes i feel that students who have been uh, taught in a you know uh, like in a softer way and maybe in an aggressive way uh, in the so called public schools i think so far i have not come across any shooting incident or stabbing inc incident where there have been moral science classes i would not say what should be because after all it is the experts who really because even when we decide matters in court we take the assistance of the experts in all dimensions to come to a right conclusion but what i am trying to kick start is that you the the academicians with the help of the students and with their with their vast experience they can come out with suggestions which not only adds 
uh, the 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 uh, insight <coughs> of the members of the judiciary, but also the legislators, where they can they, where they can uh, where they can come to a conclusion whether these these opinions which come out from all these deliberations, maybe in the form of a moot court, maybe in the form of a workshop, maybe in the form of a seminar, that all these efforts which are being uh, which are being uh, discussed and deliberated in all these ventures, in all these initiatives should not go waste. I will tell you my first reaction when I was uh, uh, relatively, you know, uh, like, you know, once in a while I would go for a conferences, but I had a very pessimistic attitude towards such uh, uh, initiatives. I felt, what is the good of, you know, of uh, having a conference, of having a seminar, and having all this, and ultimately uh, everybody has lunch, dinners, uh, a variety entertain program, and ultimately you tend to forget everything and nothing comes off. But experience taught me that no, it is not so. When you collect, you indulge in collective thinking, when you argue, when you exchange ideas, when you exchange your views, that builds a public opinion in the society and that public opinion gradually gets crystallized into a think tank and think tank gets crystallized into an opinion which compels these members of the society, members of the judiciary by giving their directions on the judicial side, trying to impress upon the legislators and the parliament, parliamentarians and ultimately the parliamentarians are forced to bring in a legislation. And in this context, I would cite just one legislation, and that is Domestic Violence Act. Domestic Violence Act, as far as my information and knowledge goes, it is merely an existence of the think tank of the people who are involved with this cause. I don't think Law Commission ever came with any suggestion for domestic violence that there should be an act. But fortunately, I would not like to undermine any organ or like to highlight any organ what I am trying to emphasize and trying to uh, tell you that what you are doing, you have to take it very seriously and constructively and do not take it just a casual activity to, to, uh, to uh, you know, propagate what you have deliberated and in which you truly and firmly believe. This was for the subject so far, but uh, 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 Professor Ved Kumari ji, when she came to invite me, she gave me the liberty that although the subject is that, but I might take the liberty of addressing or sharing my views on any aspect which I think is valuable. Today, I seize this opportunity just to, just to, uh, to rather, you know, uh, uh, to request the members of the faculty and also the student community that all of us are crying aloud and uh, of course with a uh, with lot of sincerity that there should be fast track justice there should be fast track court and all these you know uh, crime uh, especially crime against women should be uh, should be uh, dealt with in an expeditious manner but I would very much uh, like to, to, to request uh, all of you that please deliberate and come out with your, with your, uh, with your views as to what are your, the, uh, what are your views regarding the CRP, the Criminal Procedure Code of 1973 and later on you can expand to the CPCH etc. that what should be the uh, the, uh, what should be the duty of this present day uh, legislatures and even the members of the judiciary as to how to introduce a fast track procedure for the fast track justice. Since, uh, uh, although I have taken this up even on the judicial side and that we are talking so much about the fast track courts, but unless the fast track courts have a fast track procedure, can we really arrive at a fast track justice? 
some of the uh, some of the cases which might get highlighted by the indulge, by the intervention of the media they might get addressed but unless there is a fast track procedure it is very difficult to arrive at a fast track justice and in that context i have i am only repeating what i have expressed in the media as also on various forums that this 161 crpc of the code of criminal procedure should it not be done away with by substituting it 164 or maybe we can come out with some kind of a combination of 161 and 164 crpc so that the witnesses who are examined by the police can be can be uh, can be used uh, and can be reported before the magistrate and maybe uh, before the police officer and finally that evidence which is recorded should not get you know a second chance to speak in court of course with the right of cross examination and if that is checked i am quite sure i for one very very strongly believe that if this this uh, uh, you know justice uh, this uh, uh, in the crpc if you are going to introduce changes in that uh, in that uh, on that aspect i am quite sure we will come out with a uh, fast track justice for example i i just like to because it's not something very theoretical which i am i am trying to share with you because i feel uh, that supposing is a case of acid attack supposing it's a case of rape victim now what happens under the normal procedure the police goes and invest investigates and everybody knows that 161 any at least uh, anyone who is uh, is uh, related with the legal profession would know that 161 statement are not used in the court in order to to uh, to uh, convict or otherwise uh, rely upon those evidence it is only for contradictions here and there you can use it but if a drastic uh, reform is made in the crpc and i beseech you that you you let me know what are the views of the student community what are the views of the faculties of this aspect so i can add insight to my to my uh, you know uh, thought process as to whether what we think is correct or not so far i have got a very positive uh, response on this that 161 of the crpc and 164 of the crpc if it is merged there will be very little scope for manipulation <coughs> of the oral evidence of the witnesses and cannot be manipulated later in court i for one feel that crpc was first for the first time was was enacted by the britishers and this 161 was there and 164 came uh, was really uh, sorry this uh, evidence which is recorded in court when the after commitment and when the trial starts obviously a much scope is left so that the accused or even the prosecution and many a times get a chance to improve the version which is the first hand version of the accused or the victim i would uh, uh, very much want to have the response of the legal community and the students of the uh, legal fraternity to come out with a response in this regard and i, I don't think i would leave this subject very uh, uh, very easily and uh, and uh, whatever is within my of course because i tell you i just uh, i think i'm taking a bit too long uh, on the subject perhaps but Uh, some lawyer some women lawyer especially came to me that ma'am you have come out with a very good suggestion now you take a suo moto uh, cognizance of the matter and in uh, nirbhaya case you do this you do that but i but i had to uh, you know uh, cut short her suggestion i said uh, i can appreciate your enthusiasm i also feel very strongly that this should happen but a judge is as much bound by law and the rules of procedure as any common man is my personal view may be that the uh, there should be a clubbing of 161 statement and 164 statement but unless that amendment is introduced as a crpc i cannot take so moto cognizance and tell you or or tell the prosecution or the victim that this should happen 
that of course would be, I, I, I'm very conscious that I would be exceeding in my jurisdiction if I do that. So what I want to uh, just to impress upon that tomorrow is because you are, you are, an, uh, you are just an upcoming uh, fraternity and learning law, tomorrow a question might come from the audience, ma'am you are the judge, why can't you do it yourself? So before you put that question to me, my answer is before you that I cannot do it. I am equally bound by the law as you are bound by the law. So what is important is that we have to bring constructive changes into the system. And for that constructive changes, it's not merely the judge who can do it. It is you who can do it. You means anyone who feels concerned with the cause can do it and come out with, with the constructive suggestions and create a force where the amendment or new legislation comes into existence. I think I have given you enough of those loaded with so many things to think about and I don't think because this mood code competition is both a combination of an enjoyable event as also the constructive event. It's a combination of both. So if I try to load you too much with a home task, please don't get disheartened because ultimately, you know, you have to keep doing things. You have to keep pursuing things. You have to look towards a rosy tomorrow and be confident that, uh, that you know, uh, this, uh, uh, that uh, one day we, we will come out with something which is much more, you know, uh, uh, much more constructive, which can add to what our predecessors have done. You have to cultivate a mind. You have to, you have to, you as a law student, it's not really uh, enough that you read the sections. You have to see the implications of the sections and interpretation of a section where you can apply that interpretation in a way that you can compel the judge to accept your interpretation what you have given. That is creativity. So there is a lot of scope for creativity in the legal field, but then you have that has to be supported with forceful, substantial reason which can convince not only you but can convince the others also. I would like to sum up by wishing you all a very great future and a, uh, and a great contribution at your instance to yourself as also to the, to the society at large. Wish you all a great future, best of luck to every, for everything and thank you for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to express my views before you which I treat it as extremely important because in some way perhaps you would be compelled <coughs> to think on what whatever little struck me before you and I may I may be a judge in the court but you here you are the judge where you can deliberate whether the thoughts are worth accepting or they are fit to be rejected I would welcome both and best of luck Thank and best of luck.